on you. If you make an offer of betrothal to wait to marry, or hold it in your hearts, God knows that you cherish them in your hearts. But do not make a secret contract with them except in terms honorable, nor res resolve on to the marriage tie till the term prescribed is fulfilled. That one verse. It gives you, in a nutshell, the whole solution. And it proves that this is not the work of man. This is Allah's kalam. It proves that. I'll show you just now how it does that. You see, four months and ten days, any wise man could have guessed. Your guess is as good as mine. I say four, four months, you say four and a half months. Then one says five months, somebody says four months and ten days. Somebody says four months and five days. Look, it's guesswork. Anybody can guess four months and ten days. Out of a hundred, somebody might hit the jackpot. You agree? Yes. So there's nothing miraculous about that. Somebody say three months, some say three months and ten days. Some say four months, some say four months and ten days. Anybody could have guessed. That does not show that this is Allah's kalam. A man could have guessed. A clever man, he thinks he's reasonable. For divorce, the Quran says, three months. If you divorce a woman, she's got to wait three months to find out whether she's carrying or not. If you start your divorce proceeding, there is a set system. Allah gives it to you in the Quran, Surah Talaq. The bulk of the Muslims of my countries in the East, Pakistan, India, they don't know Surah Talaq. I don't know about the Arabs. You see whether they know. My people, when they get angry, you come home, the wife has made some samosas, you taste them, you insip it. So you tell your wife, he you said, you know, my mother used to make better samosas than you. <laughs> so she says, why didn't you marry your mother? <laughs> so my brothers, you know what they say? Talak, talak, talak. <laughs> this is what he does. He says, talak, talak, talak. So what? Now he regrets. He said, man, she was a good worker. Uh, she worked like a donkey. I can't get even a servant to do that work. You know, but at any price. He wants to bring her back. And he goes through some ordeals, filthy, dirty ordeals, wanting to bring her back. Because they don't read the Quran. They don't read the Quran. Allah Baritala goes out of his way. And he's teaching you how to do the job if you must. The one thing that is acceptable in the sight of God, but most hateful, is divorce. When a man divorces his wife, the Prophet ﷺ said, he said, the heavens and the earth shudder. Horrible thing. But if it must come to, it has to be done. But make a nice clean cut. The way you are taught how to do the job. So you don't have to regret later on. But this is how our people do. Talak, 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 and then regrets afterwards. Is that how the Arabs do? I don't know. The Iranians, do they do the same? Yes. <laughs> right. So, divorce, three months. You wait. In the procedure, if she's carrying, divorce proceeding stops. She must tell the man, the Quran says, Allah says, she must tell the her condition, so proceeding stops. So, after the child is born, maybe the man relents or the woman relents. Now she's got a liability. In the marriage market, the value is not the same. She's not the same. So now she might relent. He might give in. And the husband says, now where is this going to go? Where is she going to go with my child? He might also come down from the high pedestal he's sitting on. Look, reconciliation. Possible. So Allah says, do it this system, systematically. Don't do that shotgun. Shotgun marriage and shotgun divorce. Dan, 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 getting rid of people. Don't do that. However, three months. The reason behind that is biological. This is four months and ten days. I said, your guess is as good as mine. Muhammad's guess could be as good as anybody else's. What's miraculous about that? I said, the miraculous nature of that is that we are told that do not enter into a marriage contract until the term is fulfilled. In the meantime, you can suggest to your sister-in-law, if she is, you know, I said, look, man, my sister-in-law with my brother's children, where is she going to go? Islam allows that you give her protection in marriage. Just protection like this, I can feed her, I can clothe her, yes, for how long? Then you see, man, she's still young, she's beautiful, she's desirable, and you might make mischief, bring disgrace. 
Why do that? Own up. Islam says, own up. Don't plant, plant wild oats. The Westerner says, no, you must be free to plant, plant as you like. Don't get hitched up. You mustn't marry, but you can plant. You can beget a dozen illegitimate children every year from a dozen women. The, law, the, the nation say, you are a stud. You are a great guy. Islam says, no, make the guy responsible for his pleasures. So you tell this widow, he said, look, don't worry, sister, you know, after your term is over, you know, I'm prepared to marry you. I'll give you protection. In the meantime, here's some help to pay your rent, to feed the children. Oh, the woman will be elated. So I didn't know that somebody would care for me with all this liability, this half a dozen children, quarter dozen children, I have lost my looks. So she's very happy, very joyous in that emotional upset. If you call the Imam, the priest, he said, look, she's prepared to marry me. She, can't, she won't say no. Say, you want to marry this man? She says, all right. <laughs> Sign the dotted line. Later on, she finds out, he said, this guy, man, he can't hold a job. He was a sadist. He was beating his wife, starving his children. Oh, what has happened? I'm tied up. <laughs> and there's no way out. Very difficult. Allah knows that. You, you, me. Men will take unfair advantage over this helpless woman. So he said, don't you enter into a contract until the term appointed is finished. Give her a chance, give her a break. Four months and ten days. So in the meantime, she's telling people, he says, you know, Mr. Didat has suggested marriage. You say, what? You know that old man? <laughs> you don't know. You don't know what you're bargaining for. <laughs> so... You know, she can think, plan, say, no, no. by the time four months and ten days are over, I said, what do you say? She says, no, no, thank you very much, you know, very grateful for, you know, doing all this, but I'm quite all right, you know, I'll manage it somehow now. Let, give me a little longer time. In the meantime, she's looking in the marriage, my, somebody else might come along. This is Allah's kalam. Allah knows the mentality of man, the psychology of man. So he's not only catering for your needs, but he knows your sicknesses too. The unfair advantages that you're going to take over helpless women, emotional women. I will give you protection. And she says she falls for it. I said, no, no, wait. No contract until four months and ten days are over. This is how Allah gives you solutions. Then when you read, you, you study, he said, no, this is not the work of man. This is not Muhammad's handiwork. Then you realize. This is the work of an omniscient being. He knows your mentality, our psychology, everything, and is catering for your needs. And you find anything, everything. This is how the Quran works. Allah's Kalam works. One verse freed us from four evils. One verse. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya yuhallazina amun. Say, O you who believe. O men of faith. Innamal khamru. Most certainly intoxicants, while maisir and gambling, while ansabu and fortune telling, while aslamu and idol worship, rizum min amali shaitan, are an abomination of Satan's handiwork. So shun such abomination that he may prosper. That he may prosper. Four evils cut at the very roots, one verse. The Holy Prophet Muhammad said, whatever intoxicates in greater quantity is forbidden even in smaller quantity. No excuse for a nip or a tot or one percent beer. No excuse. This is how Allah teaches. And it has. I know some of our brethren bring disgrace to us. When we are talking to them, we say, look, Islam, I was talking to this lady, Gina Lewis. He said, yes, Mr. D, Dad, you know, it all sounds very nice, you know, the teachings of Islam, but you know... Then she gives me examples. She says, you know, I go into a certain car where I go, you know, where they do a lot of boozing and... He says, you know, you Arab brothers. She says, make me to put my head down in shame. Yes, Arab brothers, Pakistani brothers, we are all weak. But as a people as a whole, still we can help.